Hey everybody, Necro VMX here, and today we're going to take a look at the James Bond video games. Now, there's no way I can cover them all since there's so many, so I'm just going to run through all the major ones. Well, here's James Bond 007 on the Atari 2600. My copy of it doesn't work, or at least it doesn't play in the emulator that I have. It's pretty much a driving game, and you also uh, go underwater, so I think it's kind of based on The Spy Who Loved Me, which is the newest film when this came out. I have the version for the Atari 5200, which actually works. I may do a video on it someday, I don't know. It's a pretty interesting game, though. It can get pretty hard pretty quickly. The graphics are uh, interesting in that. Okay, this one's a view to a kill. This one actually has three different types of gameplay in it. This came out for PCs. The uh, gameplay you're looking at right now is the driving section, which has a first-person view on the top and a top-down view in the bottom bottom part kind of looks a little bit like an early version of Grand Theft Auto. Here's the searching part where you're in the building. There's also a platforming part, although I don't have footage of that. Here's another PC game. This is The Living Daylights. There's Bond and Gibraltar with the paint gun. This is a pretty uh, interesting run-and-shoot kind of thing. You're shooting into the background. Yeah, here you, here's Bond at the, uh, the mansion. So that's based on... Uh, as I said, the living daylights. Pretty cool. All right, this is Live and Let Die, which is primarily a sort of a vehicle game. You're on a boat. As you remember, in Live and Let Die, had that extended scene with the uh, boat chase on the river, so that's pretty much what the game is about. Yeah, here's more action from Live and Let Die. Whoa, jumping and going into a tunnel. Gotta say, the graphics are pretty good for its time. This is The Spy Who Loved Me, which is pretty interesting. Oh, there's Jaws! Fuck him up! Yeah! Alright, this one's called James Bond The Duel, which is not based on any uh, particular movie, although uh, they use Timothy Dalton's likeness. It's not based on License to Kill or The Living Daylights. This came out for the Sega Master System and the Sega Genesis. You're looking at the Genesis version. I actually like the version for the Master System better, because I think the controls are better in that one. But here's the Genesis one. All right, here's the one you've all been waiting to see. This is GoldenEye for the Nintendo 64. Probably the most famous James Bond game and the one that started these sorts of games to regularly be made. Pretty cool. Yeah, fuck him up. Shoot him while he's on the toilet. Owned. Yeah. Uh, you gotta love GoldenEye. If you don't love GoldenEye, there's something wrong with you. I mean, seriously, this game rocks. Fucking, fucking shoot him. Yeah! Right in the fucking head. Yeah. It's the facility level. Here's James Bond 007 for the Game Boy. This one's a little bit of a role-playing game in the style of Zelda. I actually did a commentary video on this fairly recently by request, so you might want to look for that. It was not too long ago. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Fight time. Yeah! Owned. <laughs> All this footage is from the beginning of the game. All right, here's Tomorrow Never Dies for the PlayStation. This one was a big disappointment because everybody wanted Rare to do Tomorrow Never Dies in the style that they did GoldenEye, but they lost the James Bond license, and uh, this wound up coming out. Here's a skiing part. I mean, the fact that it was in third person and it was on the PlayStation and it was kind of clunky, just everybody was really disappointed by that. So, uh, yeah, everybody wanted it to be like another first-person shooter for the N64, like GoldenEye was. I'm not saying it was a bad game, but it was definitely a disappointment after GoldenEye. This is another PlayStation game. This is 007 Racing, which is interesting. They're actually working on another racing game, another 007 racing game, which I think is coming out uh, next year. So I assume that'll be for, like, PS3 and Xbox 360 and the Wii. The, uh, the gameplay in this seems to be a precursor to some of EA's driving levels from their later games that you would see on, like, the GameCube and the Plex PlayStation 2. So, yeah. It's a pretty interesting concept. 007 Racing. Uh, here we have The World Is Not Enough for the Nintendo 64. This is pretty cool because the series returned to the N64 and it returned to a first-person view. Though it wasn't made by the same people as... You know, Gold and I, it was a completely different company. It was definitely a better game than Tomorrow Never Dies. So it's kind of interesting. World is not a lot. Some people like this even more than Gold and I because the controls are slightly better, they say, and you can run and jump and do things that, you know, would normally do in a first person shooter. 
I say it's not as fun as GoldenEye, although it is a damn good game. It's just, uh, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. This is uh, James Bond and Agent Under Fire, which came out for PS2 and the GameCube, and maybe the Xbox, I'm not sure. I really like this one. You can do these Bond moves, like watch where he shoots the crate right here. Shoot the fucking crate. Oh, da 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 The only thing about this is the guns I found to be horribly inaccurate. But what can you do? They can't all be golden eye. This is a completely original story too, which is pretty cool. Like they, they gave it a whole plot. And, you know, actors they even had John Cleese and Judy Dench were in it, although Pierce Brosnan wasn't. Here's Nightfire. Pierce Brosnan was in this. He did lend his voice to Nightfire, which is pretty much a sequel to Agent Under Fire, which used the, ba the same basic controls and engine and everything, and had the driving stages. I didn't get to show a driving stage from uh, Agent Under Fire, but here's one from Nightfire. It's pretty much the same thing. And as you notice, it's pretty similar to 007 Racing and its basic mechanics. Yeah, jump! Okay, here's Everything or Nothing, which um, was considered to be so good that some people considered it to be the James Bond movie of 2004. Uh, Pierce Brosnan played Bond in this, with both his voice and his likeness, and it was third person, but it was very good. It even had its own theme song. So that was pretty cool, Everything or Nothing. Interestingly enough, Eon Films that makes the James Bond movies, E-O-N stands for everything or nothing. because kind of like It's kind of like the same concept behind Final Fantasy, that it's called Final Fantasy because it was like going to be their final shot at success. Same thing happened with these guys, and they created Eon Films. Right, here's GoldenEye Rogue Agent, which didn't get very good reviews. It's not a terrible game, but it's a very mediocre game. I actually have the Nintendo DS version, which is pretty cool with the touchscreen controls and everything. It also came out for, you know, like Xbox 360 and PlayStation 2 and PlayStation... I don't know if it came out for PlayStation 3 or not, actually. I don't think it did. It had some cool features, but you don't actually play as Bond. You play as this guy, Goldeneye. Uh, here is... This is interesting. This is from Russia with Love, starring Sean Connery. Sean Connery actually lent his likeness and voice to this, meaning that he played Bond yet again after Never Say Never Again. This one's kind of similar to Everything or Nothing pretty cool game. And you notice some of the mechanics here are kind of a precursor to the Quantum of Solace game. Yeah, fuck him up. Yeah, owned. Shoot him, shoot him. Here's one of the driving stages from Everything or Nothing. Pretty cool. Uh, not Everything or Nothing. <laughs> from Russia with Love, I'm sorry. Alright, this is Quantum of Solace. This is the PlayStation 3 version, which has amazing graphics and everything. You kind of got mixed reviews. I mean, people all will readily admit that it's a pretty good game, but people were expecting more from it. It's basically a first-person shooter that goes into third-person whenever you find cover. And some cinematic parts, like right here, which is pretty cool. I actually have the version of this for the PlayStation 2, which I'm about to show you. The PlayStation 2 version is completely different. Here's the PlayStation 2 version. Here's Le Chief. Covers both Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace, which is pretty cool. Yeah. It's like, get moving, bitch. Yeah, this one's in third person, and um, it's, it's just a better game than the PS3, Xbox 360, and Wii versions. There's also a version for the DS, though. I haven't played that. Like I said, I can't cover every single game. There's a lot of emphasis on stealth in this and hiding behind cover and everything. I, I find it to be very fun. I just got it recently. Sneaking around, sneaking around. <laughs> very fun game. just takes a little while to get used to the controls because it literally uses like all the buttons on the PlayStation 2 controller. This guy's going to get shot. Owned! about to throw that guy off the fucking balcony. Notice this scene is like almost the same scene from the beginning of the where I showed the PlayStation 3 version. I mean, they're both based on the same movies. It just happens to be a completely different type of game. So basically, there's three kinds of Quantum of Solace games. There's the kind that came out for the PS3, the Xbox 360, and the Wii, which is the first-person shooter. There's this one for the PlayStation 2, which is a third-person kind of... Uh, tactical shooter 
with a lot of stealth aspects. And there's the DS version, which I understand is kind of an isometric thing that has more of an emphasis on puzzles and shit. Yeah! Nice. Well, anyway, there's my look at the James Bond video games. And there's just one more.